Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about bypass oil filtration. Give you some more information on it if you've not heard about it or, or maybe you already have. I want to show you the system that I have and maybe talk a little bit about the ups and downs of it and talk about a couple different systems I've had throughout the years and uh, some positives and negatives about each. Just give you some good overall information for your truck. So if you like this kind of thing, hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, we'll get into this. Welcome to the channel, yeah, do it yourself, semi, come hey, on. Hey, yo, DIY, semi, yeah. come on, won't you let me yeah. help you simplify what you like me? You like hey, me? yo, DIY, semi, yeah. come on, won't you let me yeah. help you make a profit yeah. in life? Yeah, we gon' break it down, break it down, come on, make a profit, break it down, break it down, simplify, don't stop it, break it down, break it down, come on, make a profit, break it down, break it down. So if you're not familiar with the concept of bypass oil filtration, um, your spin-on filters on your, on your engine only filter down to about 20 microns, which grabs the biggest of the contaminants, but there's still some pretty good sized contaminants that can you know, do damage and, and cause wear in your engine that that's not gonna catch. So bypass filtration is basically adding another oil filter outside of the loop of your oil galleys so it can filter down to a small micron most of them are one to three microns depending on the manufacturer and this is an AMSOIL bypass filter system it filters it's 98 percent efficient 98.7 efficient 98.7 percent efficient down to two microns so <clears throat> It filters outside your system in a loop at a very slow rate. It takes about 10 minutes to filter a gallon of oil through one of these. So word of caution, you definitely never want to spin one of these filters onto your crankcase you know, and, and your regular uh, oil system because that slow rate of filtration will starve your engine for oil and you'll destroy it very quickly. So just know that, that, that you're not you know, cheating the system or you're doing yourself any favors there. It needs to be in a bypass configuration. Every engine's gonna be a little bit different to where you hook it up. All you gotta do is find a supply for the, for the oil, run it to your filter, and then a, a return. Uh, it's just that simple. Now, there's a lot of different bypass filter systems on the market. And the one thing about them all is they all do a good job. They all pretty much do what they say they're gonna do. You know, you have this Amsoil, Gulf Coast, FS2500, Spinner, to OPS1. Um, now, the ones I've experienced with, I've, I've started with the Gulf Coast filter. It did a great job, fantastic job, but it was very messy to service and very expensive to service. By the time you spent the money on changing the filters and adding three gallons of makeup oil, you could darn near do a whole oil change. So. It, it just didn't make it cost effective and that's the thing the difference between the systems like I say they all do a good job it comes down to cost you know uh, convenience and you know cleanliness some of them can be a real mess so I didn't want to get the Gulf Coast system again on, on a future truck and so I, I tried out the FS 2500 which was way more cost effective is a little canister and you had to drop the canister off and put a filter in, which I didn't really like that because it was kind of a pain in the butt to service, but it only took about a half gallon of makeup oil. It didn't filter down as good as the, as the OPS one, or I'm sorry, as the Gulf Coast, but it was way more cost effective. And on this truck, when I bought it, I really wanted a system that was just a spin on, real simple, clean and easy. And I'm already kind of uh, a fan of some of the other Amsoil products. I really like them. So I thought I'd try this Amsoil system. I'm very happy with it. Now, the OPS1 system is probably the most uh, popular on the market. Great system, does a great job. For me, I chose not to go with that because you know it has a heating element in it. And it's just, to me, just another point of failure uh, for something. You know, I'm just trying to have less things that can fail and, and cost me money rather than more. And I had a friend that had one and and his uh, element failed. So, 
But it does a great job. It's very popular. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Now, the theory behind this is if you're filtering your oil down to two, three microns, keeping it clean, you can extend your oil drain intervals, okay? Now, that can make it way more cost effective to run synthetic oil. You can stretch your, your um, intervals out longer if you're comfortable with that. If you're not comfortable with that, you may say, I don't need a bypass filter. I just change my oil every 15,000 miles or whatever. That's great. But between that zero miles, 15,000 miles, you're still getting large particles in there that cause wear. So consider adding one of these on anyway. You know, it's about $50 for a filter change here. But, you know, how much good are you doing your engine? I believe, you know, my truck feeds my family, takes care of all of us, so I want to give it the best things available that I can to help it last a good long time. So consider that. And if you want to change your oil anyway every 15,000 miles, that's wonderful. If you want it to be cost effective, just stretch it out another 5,000 miles. You're absolutely fine. These things are going to take out most of your soot, you know, any particles that are going to cause wear. Your oil's not going to wear out. Oil lasts a very long time if you keep it clean. If you're doing a bypass system and extending your oil drain intervals, oil sampling is a must. It'll tell you, you know, your wear metals, contaminants, you know, soot levels, so you'll know and be sure that you're not causing damage or you'll know when it's time to change your oil, okay? Theoretically, you know, if, if you're comfortable with this, it's completely up to you. You can run your system for, you know, whatever interval, 15, 20,000 miles, sample it, see what the lab says. If the lab says oil's fine, you can stretch it out longer. It's all what everybody's comfort level is, and you know, some people won't want to run synthetic oil, some people will. Um, it's all up to you, but you can really, there's a lot you can do here, but regardless of which way you go about it, it's good for your equipment to keep them bigger wear causing particles out. So just going to kind of show you here what, uh, what my system looks like. Once again, this is the AMSOIL system. This is in the front right corner behind the bumper. I wouldn't necessarily put it here again if I had it to do over again because I never thought of, you know, hitting a deer or something. I could end up ripping this thing off and be in trouble. But basically, you you find a line or a port coming from your motor, and they, they sell the hose with it. You know, mount the base. This is just the filter base. Mount on your truck. Line in line out back this mine goes right back to my oil pan uh, and then they have an optional sample valve on here so whenever i want to take an oil sample i just unscrew this cover it's a little rusted on got a lot of salt on here right now hold your bottle here push this button down and you just fill your sample bottle let go of the button put the cap back on couldn't be any easier and you always put the sample valve on the outlet side because then your oil goes through your filter and you can judge the how the filter is doing its job by taking the sample on the outlet side rather than the so-called dirty oil going in you take it on the so-called clean oil coming out and then you can judge if the filter is doing its job if it needs to be changed if it's clogged up whatever now, <clears throat> just because oil is black does not mean it's dirty. It means it's discolored. You can do an oil change on one of these Detroits, start it right up and the oil's black already. It's just how it is. It's discolored. It's not dirty yet. So keeping the oil clean right here is, uh, goes a long way towards doing good things for your engine. Now, this system holds about a gallon of oil. You do not need to prime the filter when you change it because of the slow rate of filtration. You can just add the makeup oil, you know, right to your crankcase or add it in slowly, however you want to do it. You could prime it, doesn't matter. Put the oil right in there. 
and I'll just show you real quick here. I'm due for a filter change. So I'm just going to show you real quick how easy it is. All you need to change this AMSOIL one, just a regular old filter wrench here. And this system is very clean changing it, which is nice, you know. You're not making a doggone mess all over the place. Always check, make sure you didn't leave no pieces of filter on the base there. Take our new filter. We need to just lubricate the gasket here with some oil. This is going to be just like your regular old oil filter. Make sure it spins free and easy, so you're not uh, cross-threading it. Oops. Now this thing I like to snug up a little better than your uh, regular oil filter, just because it takes a lot of pounding up here sitting on the frame. There we go. I mean, that's all there is to it. It's really just that simple. So, I mean, what I do, like I said, you do whatever is good for you. This is a pre emissions Detroit 12.7, no EGR, no DPF, none of that stuff. And I did check with Detroit and I checked my manual, and it is just fine to run 540 synthetic in this engine. It's approved by Detroit Diesel. No, I did not spring a bunch of leaks when I switched it over. And, uh, you know, I get really good cold starts in the wintertime with that synthetic in there. Very happy with it. So, I start off with clean oil. I run it 20,000 miles with the bypass. Change that filter. And then send an oil sample in. See what it says. I extend my mine out a little bit. And I never go as far as the lab says you can go because I'm just not comfortable with that. Uh, but I do, I think the farthest I've gone is 60,000 miles. And if I do that, I still change my spin on crankcase filters at 30,000. They're not really doing a whole lot at that point. This filter is catching most of the, most of the gunk, but uh, you still need to change them at least at 30,000 miles. So... That's just what I do. Like I say, do as you please. Now, as far as oil, you can definitely still run 1540 conventional with the bypass system. It's no problem. It's not an issue at all. But, you know, it's beneficial to upgrade to synthetic if you want to bear the extra cost. You watch for sales on this stuff. Like, uh, well, I'm not going to show you what kind of oil I run because people have varying opinions. I sometimes get my 540 synthetic at a local supply store for $12 a gallon for full synthetic. A couple times a year they have a big sale, so I'll go buy what you know, 10 cases, whatever, 15 cases. It's a lot of money up front, but you spread it out over the course of the year, it's really not. So you're getting your synthetic oil for the cost of, you know, conventional. But uh people want to know, you know, what's the best oil to run? Uh, and it's, it's, people want to argue about it, you know, this oil is the best, that oil is the best, this oil is junk, run what works for you, you know, if you think the oil you're using is best, use that, uh, I use what I use and, and, uh, it doesn't really matter what I use, it's, it's what you want to use in your truck, so, I guess to sum it all up, regardless of whether or not you're going to extend your oil drain intervals, Bypass oil filtration is just a good maintenance move for your truck.
So consider that. And if you have any questions, drop it in the comments below. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe, and we'll see you next video.